On completion of this module, you will understand what exudate is, the role of exudate in wound healing, the constituents of exudate and their functions, how chronic wound exudate can cause delayed healing and skin damage, reasons for excess exudate, how to accurately assess a patient to identify the cause of exudate problems, the steps necessary to effectively manage wound exudate. At the end of the module, you can take a short test to check your understanding of the module's contents and reflect on what you have learned. Meet Team Exudate. This ragtag team of rascals comes with a mighty reputation but when you've got a wound, you'll be glad they're on your side. And no group is better suited when it comes to exudate and normal wound healing. So, let's get started with our culprit, the wound. Hmm, does that TV work? Let's see what happens when an injury occurs. Upon wounding, inflammation, the first stage of wound healing is triggered. Inflammatory mediators such as histamine are released into the blood to increase the permeability of the capillaries. This allows essential cells and molecules for healing to pass through the capillary wall into the wound. The resulting fluid is exudate. So, upon wounding, all the components of tissue repair work as a team and together form exudate. Exudate is an essential fluid to deliver what's needed to start the wound healing process. It bathes the wound bed to keep the wound from getting dry. Moist wounds heal two to three times more quickly than wounds that are allowed to dry out and scab over. So, why do we need exudate? Although it appears to be a simple fluid, it contains so much. Clotting agents to stop bleeding on initial wounding. Nutrients that provide energy for cellular repair. White blood cells that clean the wound at different stages of healing growth factors that control healing activity, protease enzymes that break down proteins in the wound, and protease enzyme inhibitors prevent proteases from being active once their job is done. Some wound types, such as venous leg ulcers, may produce more exudate. Larger wounds and deep wounds generally may produce a larger volume of exudate. However, if an acute wound is healing properly, exudate volume will reduce as the wound heals. Exudate is a fluid leaking from a wound and consists mainly of water, along with key components for healing. In wounds that are healing normally, exudate is crucial to the wound healing process. It nurtures and regulates the wound through each stage of healing, providing energy for repair and efficiently clearing the wound bed of debris and microorganisms to allow healing to take place. As normal healing progresses, the volume of exudate produced declines. It is important to understand the stage of healing the wound has reached, as this has a bearing of the volume of wound exudate to expect. For example, during the initial inflammation stage, there will be more exudate required to clean the wound bed and promote autolysis. Later on, during the granulation and epithelialization phases, less exudate is required. Some patients and carers believe the production of exudate is bad. Make sure you explain the important role of exudate in wound healing to educate and involve them at every step. Well, this will ensure that they feel part of the decision-making process and understand what you are trying to achieve. If you are managing a wound producing a high volume of normal exudate, be proactive and ensure you protect the peri-wound skin before there are any signs of peri-wound moisture-associated dermatitis. If wounds start producing more exudate than normal, it could indicate a change in that wound status, such as infection or a failure of compression therapy, or be a reaction to debridement. In some cases, exudate can delay healing when in the wrong amount, for example, too little, or too much, in the wrong place, or of the wrong composition. And exudate that is produced by a hard-to-heal wound can cause peri-wound skin damage, and that can make the wound get larger and damage surrounding skin. Now our team is on the right track, headed to the right place with the right composition and volume of exudate in tow, all because they understand the factors that affect exudate volume and the factors that will get our wound healing properly. These are 
The phase of healing. The largest volume of exudate is produced in the inflammatory and proliferative phases of wound healing, unless it's a hard to heal wound where the inflammatory phase is longer, leading to prolonged exudate production. Systemic factors. Cardiac, venous or other diseases and conditions can result in excess exudate being produced, in which case the underlying condition needs to be addressed to correct this. And finally, local factors. The size and depth, location, type of wound and any wound infection can have an influence on the volume of exudate needed or produced by the body. We can see how this affects the team and the wound, but how does it affect the patient? In hard to heal wounds, exudate can have a negative impact on the wound's healing environment. The inflammation process is prolonged and proteases that are normally carefully regulated become disarrayed with the resulting exudate causing damage and delaying the wound healing process. There are lots of things to look out for that can affect exudate volume. As we mentioned before, the phases of healing and systemic factors such as cardiac, venous and lymphatic disorders. Practical factors such as the wound location especially if the wound is in a dependent position on the lower limb. Comprehensive assessment and optimal management of wound exudate is of paramount importance to patients with wounds. Poorly managed exudate can lead to pain, discomfort, leakage and odour, and generally a poor quality of life. It can also cause patients to become socially isolated and depressed. As we can see, our patient doesn't look very happy. Their state of mind, caused by the pain and delayed healing of the wound, has left them feeling like their quality of life has been reduced, which can lead to anxiety and depression, feeling as if there's no end in sight. Let's take a closer look at the dressing. The dressing of the wound isn't looking too good. Too much exudate has caused leakage, it has soiled their clothing, there is an odour and their dressing needs frequent changing. All this on top of the pain and discomfort and the wound itself doesn't look any better. The wound has become infected, healing is delayed, the skin around the wound is damaged and inflamed, and the wound itself is getting larger. That's why it's important to complete a holistic wound assessment, identifying any underlying conditions or factors that could cause a delay to wound healing, including looking at the patient's medical history and completing a physical examination of the patient. The condition of the wound and the surrounding skin is a great indicator of the volume of exudate and how that is affecting the healing process. Slough, necrotic tissue, biofilm or infection can be the cause of a sudden unexpected increase in exudate volume. So special care should be taken and be sure to look out for those. To assess exudate, there are some key things to look out for, including color, odor, consistency and amount. Examining the wound dressing before and after removal gives an indication of the type of exudate and how the dressing is performing. Colour Clearish, amber or pinkish red colour indicates normal and red blood cell present exudate. Cloudy, yellowy, brown or milky red and red indicates the presence of pus or a mix of blood and pus, which can be signs of an infection. Odour is also a good way of assessing exudate. Most wounds have some odour, but unpleasant and strong-smelling exudate may indicate infection or necrotic tissue. There are various consistencies of exudate. It can be watery, thick or sticky. Discoloured, viscous exudate may indicate wound infection. And volume of exudate, normal, excessive or not enough. It might be difficult to assess, but it is important. There are tools that can help you undertake and document a holistic wound assessment and you may already have one in use in your local area. This assessment should consider the wound bed, peri-wound skin and the exudates, in addition to the other factors that may affect the patient and their wound, such as pain, arterial status, nutrition and hydration and psychosocial status. When assessing the wound bed, pay particular attention to the presence of wound infection, biofilm devitalized tissue and edema. These can all cause high volume of wound exudate. Overexposure to moisture may cause overhydration of the outer epidermis of the skin. 
Look out for the telltale signs of peri wound skin damage, which can be very pale skin, just like your skin when you've been in the bath too long. Assessing exudate can be tricky. Normal exudate is clear or straw coloured and is fairly thin. When there is white cells and bacteria in the exudate, it becomes thicker, opaque and discoloured. A pink or red exudate may indicate the presence of red blood cells or a traumatic dressing change. Now, the Exudate team are where they should be and ready for action. Ready to promote good wound healing, protect peri-wound skin and manage symptoms. Well-managed and effective wound Exudate optimises the patient's condition and quality of life and ultimately helps a wound heal as and when it should. Dressings with different permeability, level of absorbency and retention capacity can offer different total Exudate management for good moisture balance. Examples of dressings for exudate management include gelling fibres, foams and superabsorbents. If improperly managed, exudate inefficiency can cause wound healing delays, poor quality of life and increased cost of treatment for both healthcare system and the patient. The aims of exudate management are to optimise wound bed moisture levels, protect the peri-wound skin and manage symptoms to improve patients' quality of life. The ability of the dressings to absorb and lock in exudate enables the dressing to be left in place for an increased length of time, leaving the wound bed undisturbed, which may also reduce nursing time and associated costs. Macerated skin is weaker than non-macerated skin and can be easily damaged by trauma. A macerated skin also has a higher pH than normal skin and is therefore at increased risk of bacterial and fungal infections. The overall aim of wound management for many patients is the healing of the wound. Some patients, however, may have a high volume of wound exudate for a considerable length of time and the wound will not heal. This is the case for fungating wounds where symptom management and improving quality of life is paramount. Full therapeutic compression therapy for venous leg ulcers is likely to be effective in reducing exudate production. Well done, Team Exudate, a wound well on its way to healing properly. Thanks to Exudate and its moisture providing, nutrient enabling and cell stimulating factors. They know what they're doing, don't they? And now you know what they're doing, what it looks like when things are going well and what to do if things are going wrong. But the job is never done for our team, far from it. But whatever comes next, we'll know who to call on. The very good bad boys of the body.